Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our talk. Uh, we're going to talk to you about today about uh, hidden vulnerabilities in open source. Um, so a little bit about us. My name is Sharon and with me is Shaul. Uh, we're security researchers at Prisma Cloud um, from Palo Alto Networks. We deal with open source vulnerability research, uh, vulnerability management, uh, and whatever comes within it, uh, find vulnerabilities in open source. And uh, a little bit uh, about supply chain security, uh, because we deal with open source uh, security. So uh, just to give a bit of, a, of an abstract of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so we give, we'll give a, uh, an overview about vulnerabilities and CVEs. Um, just and then dive into to open source and hidden vulnerabilities, what they are, a different type of vulner hidden vulner vulnerabilities, and we'll talk a bit about behaviors that we found in our in the research that we we've, we've did in the last two years um, in the open source uh, security world, and just our, our findings and our incomes. And but let's just get dive in and start. So um, CV. Let's talk about CVEs. Vulnerability, security vulnerability is just a, a, an issue, a flaw in a software or in code and something uh, that causes things that we did not intended to do. It could be just a privilege escalation or cause execution or things that the code is not intended to do at in the first place. Uh, and to identify uh, a vulnerability, to distinguish between vulnerabilities, there is CVE ID. Uh, CV is just, is just a, a description of, of a vulnerability, an ID with a short description about, uh, about it. Uh, each one gets uh, an ID. And the CNA, CVE Numbering Authority, is the one that is responsible for assigning those CVEs. It, everyone can, can request for a CVE. I can, researchers and, and users and, and uh, developers, everyone can ask uh, from CNA and a CNA just assigns a CVE. Palo Alto Networks is also a CNA, for example. Uh, but the problem with CVE is it's just a list with a description. Uh, it doesn't have the, the metadata that we need uh, to understand what is the, really the components that are impacted uh, and what version, what version is fixed, what is the severity of the vulnerability. So this is one NVD, the National, National Vulnerability Database, common place. Um, it shows us all the missing information that we need, that vendor needs, uh, in order to understand they are vulnerable, they are affected, uh, and they need to update or fix the, vulner the vulnerability. And uh, there are also other feeds, like GitHub Advisory, that also give this information and more other feeds. So let's talk a bit about a bit open source. Um, this is why we're here, right? Uh, we all love open source. Uh, we use it all the time. We contribute to it. Uh, and there's a good reason for that, but it's, it's widely used for the last, I don't know how many years from now. Uh, it is well maintained. It, it is very easy to use uh, and it's really transparent. Like I can just import something, but I can also go to GitHub or whatever the code is, is based uh, and see the code and contribute. Uh, and actually it's all out there. It saves tons of researchers, resources, uh, time and money uh, for vendors or for users that don't need to go and invent the wheel and do something that somebody else has already done. For, in, for instance, I wouldn't uh, just write your code again, Kubernetes, uh, it's a very like complex platform when somebody else already did a big uh, community. actually. But with it and with all the, the fun uh, in open source, there are security issues that comes with it. Um, first of all, it's code, like any other. Uh, it's relevant, all, what I'm going to say is relevant for both uh, closed source and open source. Code is written by human and we're human uh, and some bugs can exist. Uh, and some bugs, like, like I said at, at the beginning, can be security security flaws, security issues. Um, when, when a lot of people work on the same project, it's also, a it's also challenging. 
sometimes it's also too convenient. We just import or require a package and we don't really go and check what is exactly the function are in this package. How does it look like? How the code looks like? Um, so for one, there can be, uh, first there can be a, a, a flaw or something vulnerability inside. And, and also we all use um, package managers, which is great, but there could be malicious packages that we would import and won't even notice. Uh, malicious packages, I mean, the packages that have malicious code inside of it, and this is not like the package we, we intended to use. For example, they they could come, uh, it, I could install a malicious packages, malicious pack, malicious packages uh, because of typo, uh, which is called typo squatting. Um, someone uploads to the package manager um, a package that the, its name is very similar to the name that the package that I want to use. Um, so I can do a typo and incidentally download the package that I didn't intend it to. And, or dependency confusions or, or even uh, it doesn't have to be uh, some something that is damaged. Uh, the maintainer itself could do uh, could install something or just uh, release a new version with a, with a, with a security issue. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm sure most of you have heard about colors, uh, the colors uh, package that not, not uh, long ago, uh, the maintainer of the package released a new version of the package with a, with a security issue inside with an infinite loop, which actually causes, caused uh, a denial of service for most of the users that just uh, uses this package uh, with the latest release. Uh, so it's quite dangerous. Also, because it's so wide and so sp spread so wide, uh, it's an easy platform for supply chain attacks. Um, for someone just to come and search for a vulnerability in one platform, one, in one application, and then uh, use it to damage a lot of applications that uses it. So there are issues. But who is responsible in open source? Like, I mean, in, in large vendors, there, there is usually a disclosure process, a security policy with a disclosure deadlines. Uh, usually it, the, it's up to 90 days between uh, the, the security issue is, is uh, uh, reported until the reporter can just publish it. Um, so there's a time there's a time frame that the maintainer or who is responsible for the package uh, for the um, for the software can fix the issue, but it is less common in open source. It exists, and some packages do have a security policy, but it's not that wide as in large vendors. And the result here, um, when it's really hard to to contact the maintainer sometimes, or or vulnerabilities are just like vulnerability reports are just ignored. Um, the result is public disclosure or what calls full disclosure. Um, and that the pub that the, the, the information about the vulnerability is published out loud, it published uh, in GitHub or in Twitter, uh, someone out there. So uh, it's it's coming but both ways. The responsibility is is, is both way. Uh, the maintainer also responsible for um for putting this uh this policy that is not doesn't exist but also the reporter that needs to to understand or follow and contact the the maintainer and don't just publish it out loud um so yeah just to talk about uh our problem uh there are vulnerabilities that are out there uh and they're published and they don't get a cve so what do we do so let's talk about the uh, hidden vulnerabilities. Uh, what are those hidden vulnerabilities? How they look like and uh, where we can find them? So uh, just like a tip of an iceberg, the visible, the visible part is uh, perhaps very impressive, but the hidden part is much uh, larger and much more significant. So uh, based on our research, we were, we were able to categorize uh, this type of uh, hidden vulnerabilities into three main types. Uh, we call the first type hidden but visible. 
It means that there is a commit uh, or a security issue. Usually there are also a fixed version and a clear, clear states of problem or security vulnerability. Like uh, this example in uh, Octoprint, a Python uh, library. Uh, this example we can understand from, uh, straight from the title that uh, there is a security vulnerability here. There is also a fixed version and a very detailed description about the, the vulnerability. The second type of uh, hidden vulnerability is uh, hidden but fixed. It's uh, basically just a commit or just uh, an issue, uh, not always a security issue. Uh, the bug is usually fixed uh, and we not uh, just uh, uh, mark uh, the word bugs, it's managed and handled and treated like a bug. So not uh, always uh, we had some clearly starting about problem or in the vulner vulnerability or uh, no indication of, of the security impact. So this is a good uh, example, uh, Envoy uh, Golang package. Uh, there is a fix, you can see the, the fix, uh, but it lo looks like a bug fix without uh, any details. Uh, but in practice, this uh, is a fix of a security vulnerability. The third type of uh, hidden vulnerability is hidden and undercover. Uh, it looks like an announcement or a feature, but actually address a security issue. Uh, it will be difficult for the simple user to notice there is uh, some security vulnerability here. And uh, you need some technical knowledge to understand the security impact. And a good example is uh, list monk. Okay, uh, from the initial reading, it looked like a, an addition of some capability to the package. But from the point of uh, a, a researcher or an attacker, uh, we can understand that behind this uh, uh, add of capabilities. Uh, or without this uh, addition uh, capabilities, there is some security vulnerability that can be exploited. And uh, we can uh, say that uh, in this uh, currently, this, uh, this commit is currently in some uh, disclosure process and we'll get the CV uh, soon. So let's talk about the time frame between the, the first time uh, there is some uh, vulnerability discussion or a commit to the time it will uh, get eventually a CV. Uh, we need to, to remember that this vulnerability has uh, exist open and visible and uh, attacker or some researcher will look to this public discussion or this fix it or commit and try to, to exploit. So, uh, the first example is uh, the well commonly uh, an M NPM package uh, handlebars, uh, and it's a remote code execution on a well uh, downloaded uh, package uh, over uh, nine million uh, download uh, per weeks, and it was hidden, open, and uh, public for fifty eight days. Uh, so here is the, the first time we introduced this uh, hidden vulner uh, vulnerability on the February 21. And uh, it finally got a CVE almost uh, two months later. So I will repeat it, it was public, visible and exploitable. The second example is a uh, well commonly used uh, Golang package. Gitea, it was an arbitrary file deletion in also well uh, commonly used package and was uh, hidden for 55 days. It was first introduced in uh, March, in the middle of March, and was uh, finally got a CV almost uh, two months later. So, uh, we talk about uh, the time it takes to this vulnerability to finally get a CVE. And uh, 
now we will see a live example of hidden vulnerability we found as a part of our research. Uh, the vulnerability was hidden, this vulnerability was hidden for uh, 70, 17 days and uh, we wrote uh, an exploit. So uh, let's take a look. So this uh, exploit is about the uh, less open UI. It's an NPN package for uh, generate uh, some uh, themes. And we create a craft, crafted theme to, to get a CV. So in the right screen, you can see the, the exploit that eventually will uh, got an RC. In the left screen, you can see that uh, we import the vulnerable, vulnerable uh, package version. And as a part of our building process, we will point to use uh, the crafted uh, theme that uh, we wrote and we'll get a remote code execution as a part of the building process of the team. Now we point to the crafted uh, theme and we got a CV and we got an RC. So we understood the problem, like there is a problem here. There are hidden vulnerabilities that are publicly out there without a CVE. So meaning there are scanners, vulnerability scanners that shows uh, there is a vulnerability, just won't catch them. So why are they existing and why doesn't, don't all vulnerabilities get a CVE? So we don't have a clear answer for that. However, some there are some, some uh, someone needs to, to file a CV in order for it to be opened. Um, and as we said before, there is no enforcement or, or some standard for open source, uh, for vulnerabilities in open source. So, uh, so it doesn't require anyone to file CVE. Uh, if the maintainer won't ask for it, uh, probably it wouldn't be done at all. Uh, and it's okay, we know that maintaining a, a, a package it's a very, very difficult uh, job. Uh, in, in addition to their normal job, their normal day job, um, most maintainers uh, just do it on a free time and they have to deal with a lot of other things that keep, uh, keep the program and the application running and uh, do new features and also just uh, correct bugs. Um, but they do have to rely on security researchers or reporters uh, that goes and just tells them about a vulnerability. Um, so, yeah, we need to ask for a vulnerability to be for a CV to for it to be a CV, right? Um, I want to give you an example that I've seen in one of the discussions in GitHub uh, for for a package that the maintainer really asked uh, why why you, we should file a CVE. Uh, this example shows that that. Uh, not all maintainers knows, know and realize the impact of a CVE. So when, C when we file CVE, so when there's a CVE for a vulnerability, it is published. So everybody can know that a release that is fixed is fixed as a vulnerability has, uh, has an impact that I need to update my package. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be usually updating a package. It could be, break my build or something. Um, so in this discussion, um, someone asked the maintainer if you could file a CVE. Um, and he said that he's curious what it would be providing to the community. So yes, yeah, when it's out there to the community, a user of this library knows that they need to update. It's simple as that. Um, but why actually should we care um, that there are vulnerabilities that are out there? Uh, as I think that we uh, emphasize this a lot of time in this talk, uh, there are vulnerabilities that are out there, not published and, and not uh, disclosed, uh, are published that everybody can exploit. Us as security researchers, we find these vulnerabilities and report them to, to our, uh, our product. But um, there are also black hat attackers that looks at the same public issues are the same the same uh, things that we look for, but they're looking for it for a different way. They're trying to look for unpatched vulnerabilities and use them, um, and then just 
exploit them and um, do things that we don't want them to do. And um, this is also a part uh, taking a place for supply chain attacks, it's like the first link in the chain. Um, when there is a vulnerability out there that the attackers can look for and just exploit, uh, there are a lot of instances that are open because they don't know they need to fix. So in our last um, couple of uh, last, last three years of research, we found that there are a lot of uh, behaviors, common behaviors for maintainers and how they deal with security issues. Um, just a disclaimer, um, we split them into four types, but um, these are the edge cases. Each maintainer, is, it's one of us, uh, it's, it's parted in the same, in a different part of the area and um, each one has some different um, merge of that uh, of those behaviors. Um, yeah, so let's start. So uh, the first type of behaviors is uh, by the book, responsive, silent, and uh, neglectful. So uh, the first the first type of behavior we called it uh, by the book, uh, the type we are, uh, really love. It has a security policy uh, with security MD, very detailed, uh, responsible disclosure process, and uh, usually very detailed release notes, usually re request for CV, and it's very welcoming security researcher. The second type of uh, behavior is the responsive maintainer. It's usually fixed issue and release or update uh, usually with a fix. The commit message uh, has uh, uh, mentioned the security impact and it's very clear and easy to the simple user to understand uh, the security uh, uh, impact of the commit. Uh, it is willing to, to disclose vulnerabilities, uh, usually request for CV if necessary, but it depends, it depends uh, on the will and the mood of the, the maintainer. The third part is the silent, uh, the silent uh, maintainer. Uh, it, it, it will fix the issue, it will fix the security problems, but it, it, it will do it, will do it silently. It's very hard to identify the commit with uh, some security impact. And uh, most of the time you need some technical knowledge to understand the security aspect. Uh, usually there is no documentation of the security issue uh, and uh, the main, the main uh, 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 behavior, it, we, we nick, nickname it merge to master. And you need to understand that uh, uh, merge some commit to or fix to the max master is really similar to a, a rollout. So if you clone the package before the merge, then you are vulnerable. And if you clone the package after the mail, so you are safe and uh, uh, just like uh, a wallet. So it, it shouldn't uh, be like this and maintainers should understand that uh, they have some responsibility to the, to the user and to the open source community. And uh, the last uh, type is the neglectful. Uh, it's maintainer with uh, no security awareness, uh, security discussion will stay open for a long time or even uh, never will be closed. Uh, he had some uh, uh, even uh, vulnerable uh, dependency, usually won't fix uh, vulnerability and is an uh, unwelcoming security researcher. So, we, dis we just covered uh, a lot of uh, so some uh, um, behaviors of maintainers and how to deal with security issues. Uh, we talked about also hidden vulnerabilities and re realized that there is a gap here between um, researchers and between, secu between uh, uh, security and between uh, the maintainers and contributors and whoever develops the, the, pro the, the application. Um, I have to say that this gap is decreases um, in the last uh, in the last year, uh, and I hope it will keep decreasing. Um, and we keep closing, so each one would know uh, the, the the vulnerability reporters and uh, the maintainers would know their um, 
would cooperate, like would know which uh, would be responsible. Um, but and there is still an issue that exists. Uh, there are you know, a lot of vulnerabilities that are publicly discussed uh, without a CV ID. So let's talk about a bit what can we do uh, in the meantime. So the first thing I we can advise is to get with the visibility. Uh, both users and maintainers should use vulnerability management scanning tools uh, to know what vulnerabilities they're exposed to. And I know this solves only the problem with CVEs. Um, most of the time, scanners won't have the information about hidden vulnerabilities. This is the problem that we discussed. So um, there are some, uh, some, some fees or some um, applications that scanners that do have uh, re researchers uh, who look for these vulnerabilities and just publish them. Uh, so you can scan and, and do know. Uh, there are open source tools, uh, also closed source tools, uh, like something that we do. Um, but yeah, just the first thing you need to know is to, to gain visibility, to know what you need to fix. But, uh, and public discussion on security issues still exists. So we need, all need to be responsible. Uh, the responsibility is on all of us, for maintainers, for uh, users, for uh, researchers, we all need to to act in the way that we would we would like to do, to do. Uh, we, would, we would want to um, to have a security policy with security MD that really is really details with a detail about uh, how we should how security researchers should disclose the vulnerability. What is the time gap? Uh, the, the time uh, frame that. Uh, the maintainer have to fix the vulnerability. And also just a platform to, to communicate. And also it needs to be respected by the researchers. There are still uh, researchers or just humans and users that don't think uh, they report on a vulnerability and just quote an issue. So there needs to be a clear way to, to, to communicate and both ways are both, uh, both uh, directions, both um, people are responsible. So uh, also you can dedicate a team to handle reports or just even someone, or they can be the maintainer or, or a contributor even. Uh, so it will be reachable and people will know who to reach to. So, so we need to talk about it more. We need to uh, put it in our, in our life uh, and to know that security is something that we need to we need to, to take care of, we need to, to respect, because uh, we all we don't want to have a package that is insecure. Um, so just be uh, with a security mindset and keep that in mind. And thank you very much for joining our talk. Um, if you have any questions, we are happy to, uh, to answer. Uh, thank you very much.